Good evening, and welcome to our Vigil Liturgy for this 20th Sunday after Pentecost. Tonight we celebrate the Right One Liturgy of the Prayer Book. Tomorrow morning we will celebrate the Right Two Liturgy. Thank you for joining us and being with us in prayer this night. Please do us a favor and take a moment and post a comment in the comment section. Share an emoji. Let us know that you are here and praying with us this night. And if there is anyone that you would wish for us to add to our prayers, either prayers for healing in body, soul, mind, or spirit, or prayers for the repose of the newly departed, I invite you to share their names and the intentions in the comments and know that we will add them to our prayers. Thank you for your presence and your prayers with us this evening. You have the bulletin link in front of you. Hopefully you've been able to access that. I will also be giving page numbers from the Book of Common Prayer as we pray this night. The Right One Liturgy of the Prayer Book begins on page 323 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men, we praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee. We give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in Christ hast revealed thy glory among the nations, preserve the works of thy mercy, that thy church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of thy name. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now, dear friends, we turn our attention to the readings of the Word of God 
for this Sunday. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this Sunday is Psalm 96, verses 1 through 13. Page 725 of the Book of Common Prayer. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. O oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence, O oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Till it out among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes. When he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not only in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, 
so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us, then, what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperors. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperors, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. I could not help but think of the Great Commission as I pondered on the Anglican mark of mission that is before us on this Lord's Day, which reminds us that our mission as the followers of Christ is to teach, baptize, and nurture new believers. Our stewardship of the gifts of God in our mission to proclaim the kingdom of God, call us to raise up new stewards, new missionaries, new followers of Jesus. As individual members of the church, we are constantly being called to prepare both others to join in partnership with us in the gospel and one day to succeed us when our time to labor in the kingdom of God in this world is complete. 
I once heard a story of a seminarian in the final year of formation for ordained ministry. This young man was sitting in front of the committee who would be giving a final decision of approval on whether or not this young man should be ordained to be clergy in the church. An elderly clergyman on that committee that would render that final judgment asked the young man, Why should the church ordain you? The young seminarian responded with sincerity and respect. Because someday you will die and someone will need to bury you and proclaim the gospel after you. I love that story. Only, dear friends, let us not allow it to get us too focused on the life of the clergy. I say that because the call to raise up partners and successors applies to the baptized and not merely to the ordained. How we need that reminder given the fact that we face and succumb often the temptation that church positions unless otherwise specifically spelled out, are lifetime terms from which you may only be excused by death. There are at least two problematic issues with that approach. First, those who labor too long become tired and then ineffective. Second, since someone else is already doing the work, there is no sense of urgency to raise up someone else. The result of this is that it is just a matter of time before the stewardship and mission not of one among the believers, but the whole body of the believers suffers for it. Eventually, the one who has labored on will labor no more. And if no one else has been raised up, then the task suddenly is overwhelming as the church seeks to determine what needs to be done, what has been been done already, and who will fill the void. Dear friends, this is for me not a matter of theory, but of reality. As a nine-year-old child, I observed the panic in a small and struggling West, uh, Western Pennsylvania Evangelical Wesleyan Church, pastored by a man by the name of Jacob. Jacob was the husband of my father's sister, my Aunt Lois. I am not exaggerating at all when I tell you that in the life of this congregation, my aunt did everything not done by her husband, the pastor of that congregation. Aunt Lois died when she was 44 of ovarian cancer. Even in her dying days, no one stepped up to take on the many and various roles that she filled in the life of that congregation. After all, even until the very end, she was still laboring on and the work was being done. And no one was noticing anything different. Until she died, that is. Only after her death was there a sense of panic and urgency when suddenly things were no longer being done.
I felt for that pastor, my uncle by marriage years later, when suddenly 11 months into my priestly ministry, I was leading the search to replace the parish secretary of the parish that I was serving. She had served for 42 years in that capacity and died suddenly and unexpectedly. Nearly a year after Mary's death, my new secretary, Pat, and I found Mary's wishes in the office for her funeral filed in the office in a most obscure place where no one but Mary would have expected to find it. Years later, even after I had left the parish but was still in western Pennsylvania, every once in a while I would run into Pat, and every time I ran into Pat, she would laugh and share some story about something that she had found in the office that Mary had obs obscurely filed away in a place no one would have looked for it. Dear friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, as stewardship, no, as stewards and missioners engaged in stewardship and mission for the life of the world, we at all times need to be constantly preparing others to be stewards and missioners with us and eventually in place of us. We cannot be short-sighted. We who labor on do so in this city and in these parishes of ours, St. Stephen's and Holy Cross, in succession to roughly 200 years of the saints of this local church whose desire was to be stewards and missioners who ensured that the celebration of the sacraments and the proclamation of the gospel would continue on in perpetuity in these places, in this city, until the day of Jesus Christ. And that, dear friends, ought to be our goal as the stewards and missioners of this day and this generation. And the only way that we ensure in as much as we can that this continues to hold true is by raising up new believers, new stewards of the gifts of God, and new missionaries to proclaim the mighty acts of God as good news for the world and for this city. And the way that we do this is by being committed not just a portion of us, but the whole of us, every last one of us, with no one exempted from this work, to teach, baptize, and nurture new believers. But how do we do so? There is a short line in today's gospel that I want to focus on as we consider how we fulfill this mission as stewards and heralds of the gospel. The Pharisees seek to set a trap for Jesus, believing that he will fall headlong into it and seal his own fate and demise. They present him with a coin. The last word of this encounter belongs to Jesus. Hear these words not as we have heard them in our officially, canonically accepted translation, but in the more commonly known translation that many of us can rattle off our tongue with great ease. Render therefore unto Caesar 
the things that are Caesar's. And unto God, the things that are God's. Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. Well, what exactly belongs to God? And what exactly belongs to Caesar? In our cultural and national setting, how many times has this been rendered as a proof text, not of a doctrine of faith, but rather a doctrine of nationalism that we know as the separation of church and state? The desire of such remembrance is directed from culture to the followers of faith has been an attempt to keep us in our place, focused on things spiritual and eternal, in the hopes that we will keep our noses and voices out of things that are not our business and in the minds of some are not of God, nor do they belong to God. Before we too willingly allow ourselves to be silenced, let us again ask, but what belongs to God? The answer should not take much thought on our part, nor should we need much time to find that answer. Think of the traditional sentence within our Anglican liturgical tradition, often used and still used in some places, including in our two parishes here, at a spoken liturgy. At the time when the people of God present our gifts to God at the liturgy, before the altar, as the liturgy of the sacrament is in its early moments. With the gifts, a portion of them in the priest's hand, the priest raises a portion of those gifts and says, All things come of thee, O God. And the people respond, And of thine own have we given thee. All things come of thee, O God, and of thine own have we given thee. So, what belongs to God? All things. It is that remembrance that drove me to remind us and me last Sunday that as stewards and missioners for God we speak to this creation as well as to the next. It is this remembrance that drives me now to remind us and me that we speak as the prophetic voice of God in all things, in the church and in the world, in sacred space and in ordinary places, in matters of faith and society, as the people of God, as stewards of the gifts of God and missioners for the kingdom of God. Only, dear friends, we do so with wisdom a wisdom rooted in Christ sending laborers out into the field long before we were sent out. When Christ sent out the seventy as sheep among wolves, with the charge to be as innocent as doves and as wise as serpents. What does it look like 
in a world where there is a focus on the separation of Caesar and God, as if a portion belongs solely only to one or the other, but not to both. For us to be stewards and missionaries for the kingdom of God, who are as innocent as doves and as wise as serpents. It means that we speak and teach others to speak and teach in such a way that we are at all times proclaiming God and the righteousness, justice, and mercy of God in the church and in the world, in sacred places and in ordinary places. As stewards and missionaries in the kingdom of God, we do not condemn or endorse anyone acting as Caesar, any one person, but we do always affirm what is life-giving, and speak against all that tears down and endangers life. With the prophetic voice of God, as stewards of the gifts of God and missionaries in the kingdom of God, as called and sent into the world to serve God, as we do so, we teach others, by our words and our deeds, how to come alongside of us and ultimately replace us as stewards and missionaries for God, who in this generation and in every generation until the day of Jesus Christ, will have the strength of courage to continue to teach, baptize, and nurture new believers, to raise up followers of Jesus Christ, who will take up the cross and follow the way that leads to eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue on page 327 of the prayer book and in the bulletin, professing our faith in the words of the traditional form of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost to the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Our response to the petitions will be, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy upon us. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word hast taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy upon us. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Kevin, our bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy upon us. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek hearts and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy upon us. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Donald, our president, Thomas, our governor, George, our mayor, and all who are seeking public office in our land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy upon us. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy upon us. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Addie, Adelaide, Amy, Anne-Marie, Father Arthur, Barb, Barbara, Betsy, Betty, Bill, Bob, Bridget, Bruce, Carlos, Caron, Charles, Charlotte, Christine, Connie, Dale, Dan, David, Denise, Don, Ed, Eileen, Erica, Esther, Florence, Grace, Harry, Helen, Igor, Jack, Jeff, Jennifer, Mother Jenny, Jim B, Jim F, Jim G, Jim L, Joan, Joanna, Joey, John A, John B Jr., Joni, Judith, Judy, Julie, Justin, Christy, Lori, Leanne, Lena, Leonard, Linda, Lisa, Marge, Marguerite, Mark, Martha, Mary Alice, Mary Ann, Mary, Michael, Mike, Merle, Nancy, Nanette, Natalie, Nathan, Nick, Paul, Pauline, Pedro, Raleen, Rick, Ricky, Rita, Ron, Rose, Sal, Shannon, Sharon, Sonia, Stacy, Sue, Susan, Suzanne, Tanya, Tia, Tony, Tyler, Wendy, and Zach. And all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need sickness, or any other adversity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy upon us. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, 
especially Andrew Andrico, Josephine Byron, Lois Davison, Merritt Hughes, Larry Jewell, Mary Kennedy, Diane Revisa, Stephen Thomas, Bishop John of South Dakota, Father Joseph Falzone, Aaron, Al, Alex, Betty, Carol, Catherine, Chuck, Mark, Ruth, and William, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace, so to follow the good examples of blessed Mary, Mother of God, blessed Stephen, Deacon, and Martyr, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy upon us. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways. To the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Now, dear friends, we bring our vigil liturgy for Sunday to a close with an act of spiritual communion having been reconciled to God through the grace of absolution and to one another through the sharing of the peace of Christ, the lover of our souls. We now seek communion together with Christ as the body of Christ that we are. In these days of pandemic, we are restricted from coming to the Eucharist for reasons of health concerns in the midst of pandemic. But we remember again and again that we may be restricted, but Christ is never restricted. Christ, the Lord of the Eucharist, the true bread of heaven and the true cup of salvation, he is never restricted and does all things, including the impossible and the unexplainable. Prayer book reminds us that when anything or anyone stands in the way between our longing and desiring to be fed sacramentally by Christ, the Lord of the Eucharist, and our ability to partake of the physical elements of bread and wine, Christ, the true bishop of our souls, our great high priest, 
responds by feeding us sacramentally and spiritually in a moment for which there are no words to truly exp explain but just our ability to embrace and be warmed and comforted and strengthened by the knowledge that Christ is feeding us. And so now, dear friends, may our hearts and our souls overflow with that longing to be fed by Christ, and may we be comforted even now by knowing that Christ is near, Christ is among us, Christ is with us. And even now is already feeding our souls and strengthening us for the living of these days. We continue in the bulletin and on page 336 of the prayer book. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at this, at, at every altar of thy church, where thy blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer thee praise and thanksgiving for our creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by thy life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. I believe that thou art truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray thee to come into my heart. I unite myself with thee and embrace thee with all my heart, my soul and my mind. Let nothing separate me from thee. Let me serve thee in this life until by thy grace I come to thy glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of thy strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and actions to the image of thy holiness. And in the power of thy gracious might, rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of thy kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the Lord's blessing. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you, dear friends, for joining us for this Vigil Liturgy on this Saturday evening as we have begun our celebration of the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. If you have not done so yet, I encourage you to take a look at the bulletin. I encourage you to take a look at the readings that we'll be reading from the scriptures at morning and evening prayer this week and at the calendar of events for the upcoming days. And I also encourage you to go on YouTube, if you're not there watching there, 
and subscribe to my channel so that you're able to easily find these premiere videos when we do these as we will continue to do these in future days. Also, if you've not done so yet, please do leave a quick comment for us to let us know that you are here and have prayed with us. And thank you for your presence and for your prayers. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.